A child was born in Bethlehem And he would be the great I am Sent to earth by God's own hand He'd know the heart of every man He'd teach the world From up above, an awesome plan to comprehend, but that's not where the story ends. So thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Thank you for that. I love that. I thought I was the only one to believe it. It's about a relationship with Christ because it's all about Jesus. It's all about Him. That's what the program's about. So tonight, I want to share just, I wish I could hear all of your stories, but let me just tell you a little bit of mine how I came to know Jesus, how I became a Christian. I was 14 years old on a park in Memphis, Tennessee. Played a lot of sports in my life, and there was a, a young man that came and opened the Word of God and asked me, Annette, if you died today, would you go to heaven? 
And y'all, I did not know the answer to that question. I didn't know it. And he said, well, I can show you from the Word of God, this Word of God, how that you can know that you can go to heaven when you die. Because this is our record. This is the record that God has given to us that those who believe in Jesus Christ will never perish but have everlasting life. And that's good news. He was giving me the gospel. And so he took the word of God out and he took me down what I now know is called the Romans Road of Salvation. Many of you have heard that. And he took me to some scriptures in Romans chapter 3 and he said, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And I knew I wasn't good. I sure wasn't good enough to go to heaven. And then he showed me Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then he said in Romans 5, 8, but God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Romans chapter 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Some of you are sitting here tonight and saying, Ned, I am just too bad. I've done too many things that are wrong. I've gone down the wrong path. How can God save anybody like me? Well, I'm going to tell you something. He can. He can come into your life and he can change your life. And I know that because he's changed mine. And so if you're here tonight and you're not for sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, and you have that personal relationship with Him, then that's the greatest, greatest news that you can ever have for you, your family, your grandkids, your great-grandkids. And so before you walk out our back doors or our side doors tonight, please know that for sure. And the way that you do that is you have a personal confession of faith and repentance and ask him to be your savior now it's a decision I, I wish I could make it for everybody and I can't do that I could only make it for myself and I remember the day when I got on my knees and I said Jesus come into my life I repent of my sins and I want you to come into my heart I want you to change me I want to live for you the best that I can. And you know what? He did that in 1970. And I've never looked back. I've never gone back. I always want to try to live for him. Do I blow it? Absolutely. Boy. But I know Jesus is real in my life. And I have no doubt that if you, my friends, come to my funeral and it'll be right here, you'll know where I'm at. But you know, it's all because of God's love for you. And some of you will be watching by television, and I want to say to you that God loves you. If you're at home or you're in a hotel room or wherever you're at, that God loves you too. And he wants Jesus in your heart and in your life. You won't ever have to doubt. You'll have the peace that will pass all understanding. And it's really a great feeling. It's really great to know that Jesus lives in your life. So forget the religion. Forget our labels. I do not think Jesus is going to say, well, what religion are you? Were you Catholic? Were you Baptist? Were you Lutheran? Were you Presbyterian? I think he's going to say, do you know my son? God's going to say, have you met my son? And God said, about his son Jesus I am the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the father but by me and you know Jesus paid a really high price when he died on Calvary it's a great price and it wasn't cheap and when he hung on the cross it was for you and for me and I read about the Roman soldiers and how they came by and they thought that Jesus was they didn't know if he was dead or not and so they didn't break his leg but they put a spear into his side and blood and, and water came from our Savior's side 
And I don't know if they really realized what they were doing, but they were unleashing the irresistible force of the universe, the precious blood of Jesus. Now, folks, that's a very high price to pay. I have three sons. And as much as I look in your face and some of my best friends are sitting out here, but I don't think I'd give one for any of you. But God did. God made a way so that we could live eternally. If you're here and you don't know that peace, tonight's your night. There's no accident that you're here. Some of you have been invited by friends and some of you have just come on your own. But settle it in your heart before this night's over and then tell somebody about it. Annette, how do I do that? It's just the prayer of salvation and it just goes just like this because it's a confession. And you say, Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe Jesus died for me. And I believe that he rose again. But I'm ready now to commit my life to Jesus Christ. And I want to follow him all the days of my life. And if you pray that prayer, he'll come into your heart and, he's, and he'll save you. And he'll become that relationship, not just a religion, but he'll become that personal relationship to you and it's a great thing would you bow with me in prayer let's pray together Heavenly Father I thank you for this great opportunity that you've given to Sam and I and our family in our church for all these years we just want to lift Jesus up that's all that matters I pray that you'd forgive me of my sin Lord, I pray for my friends that are sitting out here in front of me and for those who are all over this world that need you tonight. I pray, Jesus, that they'd open their lives up to you and that you become Lord of their lives and they would follow you all the days of their life. And I pray this in the precious and holy name of Jesus.